Good morning. Uh, my name is Amar Shahada from Best Tours. I have been doing Steve Ray's groups for the last 12 years. Do you think I'm good enough for Steve? If Steve come, comes with me, that's a good reason for you to come with me. Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we once again give you thanks and praise for all of the blessings of this day. Uh, we ask especially today as we go to Gethsemane, where our Lord suffered for us and prayed that his cup be lifted from him, that we uh, intervene today for all those in our lives who are suffering, our family members, our friends, all those who are in need of God's healing graces this day. Not my will, but yours, and God. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. We're now walking through the Garden of Gethsemane. That tree right there, for example, is over 2,000 years old. That one is as well. If it had mouth and ears and eyes, it'd tell you what it saw. That day when Jesus was in his agony here in the garden, right among these trees. Here's our group taking pictures of the oldest of the trees, well over 2,000 years old, as Amr explains it. Just to the dimness of this church, and it's meant to be. Barluzzi is much smarter than making such mistakes. He created that intentionally. So when we walk in there, folks, and you come to the Rock of Angony, uh, allow me to ask all of you, actually, to kneel down and touch, not for the sake of touching, for the sake of being touched, actually. Had he not been a divine person, he could have never handled that kind of a thing. And at that moment when he was here, remember that God can think about all of us and work in all of our lives at the same time. When he was there at that rock, weeping and crying in agony, he had you personally, the divine person Jesus had you personally in his mind, and he personally took your sins and he said, I'm going to take your sins, Kathleen. I'm going to take your sins, Will. At that moment, he knew every one of us, and he took all of our sins, and he suffered for them because he loved us. We left Gethsemane and drove along the east side of the walls of Jerusalem, got to the top of the Mount of Olives, where we got off the bus at the church of Pater Nostra, where Jesus ascended into heaven and taught his disciples to pray the Our Father, which is in almost 180 languages now around. Amr explained it all, and I gave my talk on Acts chapter 1 and the ascension of Jesus, after which we prayed the mystery of the rosary of the ascension.
southern wall of the temple area where in the wall you see arches that are blocked those that was the entrance to the temple at the time you see them to your right and then at the foot of that wall there are remnants of the original steps the stairs where jesus would stand actually and address the crowds that were coming to the temple this was the way people entered the temple area we all get off the bus here and i give the story of salvation history from adam and eve until today while we're looking out we could see the whole story of salvation right there there's the mount of olives kidron valley there's the dome of the rock and the walls of jerusalem and right up there is mount zion so we're going to be talking about this for the next 20 minutes or so. God was disgusted with humanity. They're always falling into sin. So he looked for one man that he could build his whole covenant upon. One man that he could start all over with. And he found a man in Ur, in Iraq of today. And if you want to see it, we went there and filmed there right when ISIS was coming into Iraq. We were there filming for a week. We went to the place where Abraham lived for 75 years. He was there 75 years before God came and called him. And his wife Sarah was 65 years old. His name was Abram at the time. Abram means father. It was a cruel name because he didn't have any kids. So you'd say, hello, what's your name? Abram. Oh, well, that means father. Where are your kids? I don't have any. He didn't have any kids, 75 years old. And God comes to him and says, I want you to go to a land that I will show you. And I want you to pack up everything and go. And I will give you this land and I'm going to give you a son. And Abram said, that's very good. I will do this, but I'd first like to see my mortgage, a pension, what kind of health insurance I'm going to have, and is there some kind of a contract <laughs> that we can sign so that I know that this is not a scam. God says, just go. And Abraham says, well, okay, where do I go? God says, start walking. I'll tell you when to stop. Here we are arriving at the Ramat Rachel Kibbutz for our lunch. Excellent place to have lunch, fresh food, and lots of it. Everybody loves this place. This is just the dessert here at Ramat Rachel. And look at the salads. This is where we stop at a Jewish kibbutz for our lunch today. Excellent food. Excellent, actually. People think this is the best food we eat along the way. And here's all our folks having their lunch with Bethlehem out the window. Our next stop is Mount Zion. These are the churches we're going to visit there. We get off the bus near. Uh, Zion Gate, you can see the bullet pock marks here still from the war, uh, six day war. Our first stop is Dormition Abbey where Mary fell asleep. Look at this beautiful German Benedictine church, massive and just as beautiful inside. Here we pray the last two of the glorious mysteries of the rosary. Before we go down, these are six of the women that prepared the way for Mary from the Old Testament. Supper, we're going to the upper room of these steps. Go through the antechambers. And we're going through this little door, but first we'll look back. There's the Church of Dormition where we just were. And now we're heading right in this inauspicious door into the upper room. And there it is. Four sacraments are related to this room. And we're going to pray two mysteries of the rosary, the institution of the Eucharist, and the, inst and the descent of the Holy Spirit, both of which took place right here. Amr is going to explain part of it. I will explain part of it. And then Father, everybody, everybody please come. Um, 
So when they're, normally when a Muslim Imam stops the prayer, this is where he opens the prayer and has to stand right here. Sometimes I allow people to come and stand here and take their pictures. St. Peter and Galakantu. We're going to the place where Jesus was kept in prison over Holy Thursday night. This was a cistern. And I'll give you a perspective here. This was a cistern, this stairway was put in for us, but this, the only way you could get in here in the first century was through that hole, and you'd be dropped down into the cistern. Those windows are there for our benefit. And this was where Jesus spent Holy Thursday night in prison. Dropped down from that hole, and here's a picture to show what it looked like, how we got down. We're at the church of St. Peter in Galicantu, where Peter denied Jesus, but also where Jesus was brought up these steps for his trial before Caiaphas. And our folks are touching the steps that Jesus walked on. Probably there was his blood on those steps, and they're down there venerating them and touching their rosaries. We got back to the Notre Dame for a couple hours of resting and relaxation before we go to the solemn entry. There's going to be another movie because the solemn entry going into the tomb is worth a movie all by itself. And then dinner on the rooftop of Jerusalem.